Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. In this video, we'll be learning a new subtopic in chapter 7 called Acid-Based Titrations. Acid-Based Titrations is a method used to determine the unknown concentrations of an acid or base. So this solution is the one located in the conical flask known as analyte. An indicator will be placed in the analyte to give an observation from these reactions. Usually for titrations, we'll use phenolphthalein. So these solutions will be neutralized by an acid or base of known concentrations called standard solutions. So the solution is the one located in the burette known as titrant. A solution is added gradually to the solutions of unknown concentrations until the chemical reactions between the two solutions is complete. The point at which reactions is complete where all the acids and base have reacted to form salt and water is known as equivalence point. So the titrations will immediately stop at the end point where it can be determined from the change in the color of solutions caused by the indicator placed in the analyte. So this equivalence point occurs before the end point and vice versa for end point. End point will occur after the equivalence point. Hence, a suitable indicator with an endpoint close to the equivalent point should be used. pH range is a range over which the indicator changes color from acid to base. It is determined from the type of salts formed. Here are the examples of indicator and their pH range. Phenolphthalein with pH range of 8.3 until 10. Metal orange got pH range from 3.1 until 4.4, while metal red got 4.2 to 6.3 as its pH range. So this pH range at the equivalence points where the salt is formed is determined from the steep vertical portions in the titration curve we are going to learn after this. Acid-based titration curve is a plot of the pH of a solution referring to the analyte versus the volume of solutions added referring to the titrant. There are three types of titration curve involved, same as the types of salts we have learned before. They are strong acid, strong base, which will lead to neutral salt with pH equal to 7. Weak acid and strong base, which is the basic salt with pH more than 7. And lastly, strong acid and weak base, which form the acidic salt with pH less than 7. This is how a titration curve will look like. The curve will not always start from below as shown here. This low pH indicates you start with an acid as at the analyte. Once the reaction has proceeded by adding base as your titrant, you could see the pH started to increase indicates the analyte now is no longer just acid. So both acid and base are interchangeable to become the analyte or the titrant. So this steep vertical slope shows a region of somewhere salt to be formed. Before sketching a curve, you need to determine the type of salt to be formed from the questions. Say you have weak acid to react with strong base, then you're going to form basic salts and water. After that, identify which of the two chemicals will be the analyte and also the titrant. So from this statement, we can conclude that a substance with known amount will be the analyte. Let's say in here we have 30 ml of 0.1 molar HCl, while the substance with unknown amount will be the titrant. You'll be introduced to all four important steps to sketch a titration curve. The first step will involve the calculations of initial pH of the solutions. So the pH will depend on the analyte concentrations. Second step is to determine equivalence point. When it says point, there must be two axes in the titration curve. First one is x-axis, the volume of the titrant. So it can be determined from the formula of MAVA equal to MBVB, while the second axis is going to be the y-axis of pH, which can be determined from the salt hydrolysis. The third step involves pH jump. So this pH jump can be seen from the steep portion on the titration curve. It will depend on the type of titrations involved. So the reactions between strong acid strong base will have pH jump of 3 to 11, strong acid weak base pH jump will be 3 to 7, and lastly weak acid strong base pH jump of 7 to 11. Lastly, to identify the final pH so this final pH will depend on the concentrations of the titrant. Some questions already gives you volume of titrant to be added, which is much higher than the volume of titrant at equivalence point. Then, you can also use this as a point approaching towards final pH. They are still accepted, but when calculating the concentrations, please use the total volume. 
Out of the three types of titration curve, we will look at two of them to see what should be done when dealing with such combinations. The first one is titration curve of strong acid versus strong base, which will result in neutral salt. So the question is asked to sketch the titration curve of reactions between 25 ml of 0.1 molar HCl with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. So we would say the HCl with known volume will be the analyte, while sodium hydroxide with unknown volume will become the titrain. To determine the initial pH of HCl, we need to first write the chemical reactions involved to get the concentrations of H+. So write the dissociations of HCl, which is a strong acid, that undergo 100% dissociations in water, followed by IF table in here, initial and final, to show their dissociations. And then we'll proceed to the pH calculation since we already have this HDO plus value of 0.1. And lastly, we'll get our pH equal to 1. So we could already take out a point to be plotted on the curve when titrine is not yet to be added, so we have zero volume, then the pH will be 1. Moving on to the next bit where we need to determine the equivalence point. Knowing a point should have both volume and pH, so the salt and ACL will be formed when all the acid HCl and sodium hydroxide have been dissolved. So we need to first check their coefficients. For this example, we have a one-to-one -one reactions. So we'll proceed with M acid V acid equal to M base V base. We already know both concentrations and volume of the analyte. Now we want to know how much titrine needed to form salt. So we are going to set aside the volume of titrine on the left, which in this case, the volume of sodium hydroxide, and then substitute the value. Then lastly, you will get 25 ml as your volume at equivalence point. As for pH solutions in a conical flask, we need to rely on the salt hydrolysis analysis. So, dissociations of NaCl tells us both ions Na plus and Cl minus cannot be hydrolyzed due to strong species involved. So, we have this comes from strong base, Cl minus comes from strong acid. So, the pH we rely on the auto ionizations of water, which is pH equal to 7. Since salts is formed when both acid and base are mutually agree in the reactions, hence a range is needed to locate the equivalence point, indicating acid now about the change to become base. So the titrations of strong acid and strong base will form neutral salt with pH equal to 7. Therefore, the pH jump will be between 3 to 11. And lastly, for final pH, you need to write the dissociations of titrine NaOH to become Na plus and OH minus. And then we can simply plug in the concentrations of OH minus you got from this IF table into the formula of POH equal to negative log 0.1. Then it will give you value of 1. And the final pH can be determined by subtracting with this 14. Then you'll get pH equal to 13. So the volume of titrine should be greater than the equivalent point. But since no volume given here, we can say that the pH at considerable a volume will approach 13. All the information from the four steps is gathered to form a titration curve of pH against the volume of titrine, which is sodium hydroxide. So the first point is at volume equal to 0 and pH equal to 1 followed by the equivalence point at volume equal to 25 and pH equal to 7. Then we're going to have this pH jump between 3 to 11, where the steep curve is drawn. You can set these two boxes horizontal as a range to form that steep slope. And lastly, you will have this final pH approaching 13. So your titration curve will look like this. It starts from below because the analyte is an acid, as the reactions proceed, more and more base is added, hence it goes up here. If you happen to start from the base, then the curve should start from the above, going downhill. Don't forget to label your equivalence point pH on this diagram, which is 7. A strong acid, strong base titrations can be performed using either methyl red or phenolphthalein indicator. So the methyl red changes color in a pH range between 4.2 to 6.3. It will appear red in the acidic solutions and clear in the basic solutions. While phenolphthalein changes color in a pH range between 8.3 to 10. 
so it will appear pink in the basic solutions and clear in the acidic solutions. Both indicator changes color on the sharp increase on the curve. Second example, we'll look at the titration's curve of weak base and strong acid, which will result in acidic salt. The questions ask you to sketch the titration's curve of reactions between 25 ml of 0.1 molar and H3. So this will be the analyte, while 0.1 molar HCl will be the titrant. So another information is given is about the Kb of NH3. Whenever we have Kb value, it means that the base in here belongs to weak species. To determine the initial pH of NH3, first we need to write the chemical reactions involved to get the concentrations of OH-. So we'll write the dissociations of NH3, undergo partial dissociation in water because this is a weak base, to form this NH4+, and also OH-, followed by the ice table to show their dissociations. And then, by using the Kb given, X will result in two different values. One is positive, another one is negative. So we'll take only the positive value, hence x equal to 1.333 10 to the power of negative 3. Since x is equal to OH minus concentrations, we need to first define OH minus concentrations as 1.333 10 to the power of negative 3 molar. Then we'll proceed to the pOH calculations by substituting the value, then the pOH of analyte is found to be 2.88. But then we need to find the pH value. So we can minus it with 14 and lastly pH is going to be 11.12. So we could already take out a point to be plotted on the curve. When the titrant is not yet added, which is 0, then the pH is going to be 11.12. Next is equivalence point. First, we need to check the coefficients for these reactions. So we're going to have these one-to-one -one reactions. Then we can proceed to MAVA equal to MBVB. We already know both concentrations and volume of the ammonia. Now we want to find how much hydrochloric acid needed to form the salt. So set aside this volume of HCl on the left, substitute all the value. Lastly, you will get 25 ml of this volume HCl. As for pH of solutions in a conical flask, we need to rely on the salt hydrolysis analysis. The dissociations of NH4Cl will result in conjugate acid NH4 plus and conjugate base Cl-. Since Cl- is an anion from strong acid, it means NH4+, ion which comes from the weak base, will be the one to be hydrolyzed. So we could see NH4+, to react with H2O, to undergo reaction to form NH3 and also H3O+. So the presence of H3O+, in these reactions, indicates that the salt is acidic, with pH less than 7. Titrations of strong acid and weak base will form acidic salt with pH less than 7. Therefore, the pH jump will be 3 to 7. Lastly, for final pH, since we are dealing with this strong acid HCl, the dissociations of titrane will involve complete dissociations. Then, we are going to proceed with this IF table to show their dissociations, and then simply plug in the concentrations of H plus we have in here into this formula, and lastly, the final point for this pH approaching wine. All the informations we have guided just now, we're going to plot them on this titration curve of pH against volume of HCl as our titrant. So the first point will be at volume 0 and pH 11.12, followed by equivalence point at volume 25 and pH less than 7. Then the pH jump will be between 3 to 7, where the steep curve is drawn. The final pH is approaching 1. So your titration curve will look like this. It starts from above because the analyte is a weak base and as reactions proceed, more and more strong acid is added, hence it goes down approaching final pH of 1. Don't forget to label your equivalence point pH on this diagram, which is less than 7. Note that before the salt is formed at equivalence point, the solutions consist of both weak base and NH3 and strong acid HCl. So these two components make a basic buffer region up here before the equivalence point. Here are the summary of the titration curve that are possible to be formed. Although shown in the summary is only three diagram, but it can be up to six due to analyte and titran that is interchangeable. So you need to memorize all these four steps to draw the titration curve correctly. 
a careful selection of indicator will reduce the indicator error. In order to choose the best indicator, you have to look at the endpoint pH range. Make sure they lie on the steep portions of the titration curve. So this choice ensures that the pH at equivalent point will fall within the range over which the indicator changes color. Here are the example of suitable indicators that can be used for each type of titrations involved. Let's try this one example on calculations regarding acid-base titrations. In an experiment, 40 ml of 0.15 molar HCl is titrated with 0.20 molar NH3. So the substance with known volume will be the analyte. Substance with no volume will be the titrant. So you need to calculate the pH of HCl before titrations, in other words, the initial pH. pH of solutions after adding 10 ml of the substance of titrant. And then we need to calculate the pH at equivalence point where the salt is formed. Then after adding 50 ml of NH3, way much than the previous substance. And lastly, to sketch the titration curve. Another information given in the questions is KB of NH3. This tells us that the NH3 belongs to weak species, means this HCl comes from the strong species. So we have a combination of strong acid and weak base to form acidic salt. The first question wants you to calculate the pH of HCl before titrations. So this HCl is a strong acid, means the dissociation reactions will involve complete dissociations denoted by this single directions arrow. Initially, you have 0.15 molar for HCl. Once dissociated, all of the 0.15 will belong to each H plus and also Cl minus. Then knowing the concentrations of H plus, you can simply plug in into the formula of negative log H plus, lastly giving you 0.82 as the pH. And lastly, we can get a coordinate of 0 mL of NH3 will have the pH of 0.82. Next, we need to find the pH of solutions after adding 10 ml of NH3. So this solutions now belongs to combinations of HCl and also NH3. When we are about to add another substance into different substance, then we need to first find the number of mole because changing volume will also change the concentrations. So we need to find the each number of mole for each substance. First, for HCl, we know the concentration is 0.15 and then we have this 40 ml, the analyte divided by 1000, you'll get 6.0 10 to the power of negative 3. And then for NH3, we add 10 ml times with the 0.20 molar divided by 1000, you'll get 2 times 10 to the power of negative 3 mole. So out of these two, one of them will completely be used up and one of them will have extra in the reactions. By reacting these two, they will form salt of NH4Cl. So we will again use this ICE table to find what kind of species will be left after the reactions has occurred. Simply plug in the value that we have already calculated. So for HCl, we're going to have 6 times 10 power of negative 3 mole. And then NH3, we have 2 times 10 power of negative 3 mole. And, and about this NH4, we're going to have 0 at the moment. And then, as for the change in terms of number of mole, look for the limiting reactant between these two, who will be first used up. So, we could say this NH3 because it's a small amount, so this will limit the reactions from happening. So, we're going to put this delta N as minus 2 10 power of negative 3, minus 2 times 10 power of negative 3. And as for product, they will have this plus sign. And lastly, we're going to get a number of mole at final stage. 4 times 10 power of negative 3 and 2 times 10 power of negative 3. Final reaction suggests that we're only left with this HCl which is a strong acid. So we're going to take this number of mole to calculate new concentrations of HCl. So now our new concentrations of HCl will be 4 times 10 power of negative 3 divided by 50. So this 50 comes from the total volume additions of HCl of 40 ml and also NH3 of 10 ml. And lastly, our concentrations of HCl are going to be 0.08. And inside our HCl, we have this H plus characterize the acid character. Then we can simply calculate the pH value by substituting into this formula. And lastly, we'll get pH of 1.10. And we know that when we add 10 ml of NH3, then the pH will increase up to 1.10.
Next, we need to determine the pH at equivalence point. Even though the questions only ask you about the pH, but then we know at equivalence point, we need to have both volume and also pH. So we'll start with the pH as the y-axis. So we're going to look at the salt hydrolysis reactions. So we have reactions between strong acid, HCl, and weak base. So they will basically form acidic salt. So the neutralizations of strong acid and weak base, we're going to do these salt dissociations reactions. And from salt dissociations reactions, we're going to take this NH4 plus to further react with water. And then we're going to form this NH3 and H3O plus. So from this H3O plus present in our salt hydrolysis reactions, we could say that this salt is acidic with pH less than 7. At equivalence point, all base in the conical flask has been neutralized by the weak base and mole of base and acid are stoichiometrically the same. So we can find the volume at equivalence point by using this formula of M acid V acid equal to M base V base. So we could see we have the one to one reactions and we can simply substitute the value given in the questions. And lastly, our volume of ammonia going to be 30 ml at equivalence point. So our next coordinate going to be 30 ml of NH3 means the pH is less than 7. The question further asks you to calculate the pH of solutions after adding 50 ml of NH3. So we need to find a new mole of this NH3. So substitute this value into the formula. We're going to get 0.01 mole of NH3. Knowing that our previous mole of the analyte is 6 times 10 power of negative 3, then we can simply plug in into these equations. Then HCl going to have 6 times 10 power of negative 3, and the mole for NH3 is going to be 0.01, and for the product, they're going to be 0. And between these two, look for the limiting reactants. Who will limit the reactions? So between NH3 and also HCl, HCl got lower value than the NH3, means they will be first used up in the reactions. And then we're going to put this delta N equal to negative 6, 10 power of negative 3, negative 6 times 10 power of negative 3. And for the product, we're going to add them 6 times 10 power of negative 3. As for our final mole, we're going to have zero value for this HCl, means all of this acid has been used up. We have extra of this NH3 together with the salt. Look at the components in our solutions now. We have weak base and also we have the conjugate salts. Means we have a combination of these two, they will lead to the buffer solutions. So we can include these. Calculations of pH according to henderson hasselbalch equations. But before we substitute the value into the formula, we need to first find each concentrations for NH3 and also NH4Cl. So for the concentrations of NH3, we're going to have this 4 times 10 power of negative 3 divided by 0.09. So this 0.09 liter comes from the 40 ml of the analyte together with the 50 ml of this titrant. Then we'll get concentrations of 0.044 molar for NH3. As for the salt, we're going to get 0.0667 molar. Since our reactions got base and also its conjugate salt, then we need to first calculate the pOH. So the pOH equal to pKb plus log concentrations of the salt divided by the weak species. So we, are, we have our pKb, negative log 1.8 10 to the power of negative 5 plus log. This is the concentrations of our salt divided by concentrations of our weak base. And lastly, our pOH is going to be 4.92. In order for you to find the pH, we can simply subtract this value from 14 and you will get pH equal to 9.08. As for our final coordinate, we're going to get volume of NH3 equal to 50 ml, while for the pH will be 9.08. Now we're going to plot all these points on our titration curve, pH versus the volume of NH3, which is our titrans. So our initial point is going to be at volume 0 and 0 0.82 in here, and then we add 10 ml of the NH3, they have 1.10 pH. And for the equivalence point, we have this 30 ml and also pH less than 7. And lastly, the second addition in here. But before we put the second additions, let's look at this equivalence point. pH less than 7 means the pH charm going to be between 3 to 7. Then the steep slope will be around here. And our 
final pH or the second additions that got much higher volume than the equivalence point, they will be around here. And once we plot our point, then we're going to have this kind of titrations curve. Don't forget to label your pH at equivalence point, which is less than 7. And look here at this upper part, we have a combination of strong acid and weak base, means the salt and also the weak base, indicates that after the equivalence point, we're going to have this basic buffer region. That's all for subtopic 7.2 acid-base titrations. Thank you.